Every language has at least one way of expressing conditions on some events. English, for example, uses the word if to indicate a condition, as in, if I whistle, you jump. So there are two events here, I whistle and you jump. These are called clauses. The main clause in this example sentence is you jump, and the condition clause is I whistle. English has another way of stating a condition, as in, when I whistle, you jump. In this example, when means basically the same thing as if in the previous example. Calm has two ways of expressing conditions. The first condition is a subordinate conditional, which is very similar to the English construction with a subordinate if or when clause. The second construction that I'll cover in the second half of this video is very common in Calm, but unusual from the point of view of English and other European languages. In this construction, there are two main clauses, one with a special verb, meaning if or when, and a very common use of conditional expressions is in talking about hypothetical questions or hypothetical situations. Here is the model sentences. You jump if I whistle, or you jump when I whistle. We don't squash up to. We don't squash up to. You jump when we whistle. We don't squash up to. I jump when you whistle. We don't squash up to. We don't squash up to. I jump if you folks whistle. We don't squash up to. I. We don't squash up to. I. You jump if he whistles. We don't squash up to. The word qua works in similar ways to us while. They both introduce a subordinate clause that uses the subordinate subject pronoun suffixes. These were introduced in the subordinate subject in questions video. The general pattern for this construction is your main event, qua, and then your conditional event. The main event has the main clause subject, while the condition event has the subordinate clause subject. In English, it is possible to put the conditional clause first, as in, if I whistle, you jump. This is also possible with a subordinate conditional in clallum. In that case, the following then clause is preceded by the conjunction e, like qua shupten e huitungt, qua shupten e huitungt. However, that construction isn't common, and usually if you want to put the condition first in column, you have to use a different construction of the translation can be replaced with when. For example, huit dung qua shupten can also be translated to you jump when I whistle. The difference between us and qua with us, the event in the subordinate clause is occurring at the same time as the event in the main clause, while qua, on the other hand, the event in the subordinate clause is a condition for uh, the event in the main clause. And so it happens before. In these sentences, it is possible to translate qua as if or when. And you will see that qua is more a general function as the introducer of subordinate clause that do not easily translate as if or when. You could be able to see a connection between those and the use of qua in conditional clause. It's a new vocabulary word. I come for monster and shamu for rain. He swats and qua here. I wish you had me here. Yeah, some time. Yes, qua in. Coordinate conditional for hope. It is advised to review the condition and with, but without, and or video on the E conjunction. In the coordinate conditional construction, we have two main clauses joined with E, meaning and or with. In this case, the E can be translated to then. Also remember that both the clause beginning with ho 
and the clause following the E have main clause subjects. Neither clause is subordinate to the other. Keep in mind the general pattern for this construction is ho, condition event, E, and main event. Let's listen to the model sentences. If I whistle, you jump. Oh, ten, two, ten, three, ten, two. We whistle, you jump. Hearts, shop, the wheatings. Heart, shop, the wheatings. If you whistle, I jump. Hearts, shop, the wheatings. Hearts, shop, the wheatings. If you folks whistle, I jump. Hearts, I shop, the wheatings. Hearts, I shop, the wheatings. If he whistles, you jump. Hot shop the wheatings. Hot shop the wheatings. Both ho and in the main event are followed by the main clause subjects. In the coordinate conditional, the ho clause, which is the conditioning event, always comes first. And as far as it can be determined, there is no difference in meaning between the coordinate and subordinate conditional constructions. The word ho is a verb and can be the main verb of a sentence by itself. As in ho and shoot. It's when I whistle or it's if I whistle. That's what it translates to. And our last lesson on conditional clauses, hypothetical. Consider the difference between these two English sentences. If I whistle, you jump, or if I would whistle, you would jump. These both express a main event, you jump, and a conditional event, I whistle. The difference is that the second sentence expresses the speaker's opinion about a hypothetical situation. In English, we use the auxiliary verb would. In Clallam, we use a little word k after the verb and before the tense and subject makers. Let's listen to the model sentences. You jump if I whistle. We do grab shoot deep. Hook then shoot if we do. Hook then shoot if we do. We do grab shoot deep. This little word, which we'll call the hypothetical Q, and it's pronounced K, it's a throaty sound is another speech act particle, one of a set of little words that follow the first word of the sentence. They all function to show something of how the speaker feels about what he or she is saying. When the hypothetical cue is used with a future tsa, the translation into English is the same as without it. For example, huitunk tkwa shupten and huitunk tsa tkwa shupten both translate as I would jump if you whistle. In Klalem, there is a slight difference in meaning where the second example with the tsa, the future tense, refers specifically to a future event. When the hypothetical cue is used with the past, the best translation into English is with would have. For example, hui dunk yat kwa shuktin is translated as I would have jumped if you whistled. Notice that one or both clauses of the conditional construction may have the hypothetical cue. The hypothetical cue may occur in any sentence, not just conditional. Also, the hypothetical cue comes before the past or future tense maker and after the yes or no question maker. For example, hia uk yat, would you have gone? And to the last Konawi for this lesson. What? 